Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new uh, Mini Meet the Masters Homeschool Art. So today we're talking about the work of American photographer Sandy Scoglins. And I love photography, and she is just one of my all-time favorite photographers. Uh, a few words to know. So the first one is tableau. Uh, a tableau is a scene where you have uh, characters arranged for dramatic effect, where they're acting as if they're uh, unaware of the existence of the viewer, the photographer, or what's going on around them. They're just um, kind of staged uh, and holding still. And you'll see a lot of her photos are tableau. Uh, and then we're going to talk about color schemes a little bit. So uh, you can have a complementary color scheme, which those are colors that are cr across from each other on the color wheel. Our eyes seem to like those colors. A lot. So if you think of Boise State colors, those are blue and orange. And if you look at blue and orange there on the color wheel, they are across from each other. So those are complementary colors. If you think about your typical uh, kind of Christmas color scheme, you have red and green. Those are also complementary colors. So if you use colors as the main colors in your art that are across the color wheel from each other, you have created something in a complementary color scheme. Now analogous colors are next to each other on the color wheel. So those are other combinations that are ice like. So if you use all blues and greens, kind of ocean colors, that's an analogous color screen. Or if you use blue and, uh, and purple or purple and red or yellow and orange, uh, if those are your main colors in your painting, those are analogous color schemes. All right, can you guess what this one is? Is it an analogous color scheme or is it a complementary color scheme? You're right, it is a complementary color scheme because it's blue and orange, which are across from each other on the color wheel. So this one is called Revenge of the Goldfish, and that gives you a good idea of what our work is like. So you have these kids that don't seem to be aware that their room is filled with giant floating goldfish, and uh, the whole room is painted in one shade. Uh, this is very typical components of her uh, most well-known work. You have kind of a, a scene that is painted in one color, and then you have animals all over the room in another color. And then you have human actors that are staged inside that scene. So that is the tableau. So she was, uh, she lived all over the United States, but now lives and works in New York. So this is some of her earlier work after she uh, graduated art school. Um, this is called Cookies on a Plate. And uh, you can just see how she's playing around with all these different colors and patterns. And honestly, these are kind of hard to look at. That kind of hurt my eyes, but they're, they're kind of really interesting ideas because she's playing around with all these different shapes and patterns. Yeah, look at this one, talking about hurting your eyes, peas and carrots on a plate. This one is just kind of screaming at you. And then this one, it takes you a while to even figure out what it is. So, so Look at it and see if you can figure out what it is. The title gives you a clue. And yeah, when you look at it, it's a box wrapped in pattern paper that is then photographed against a background of the same pattern paper and lid so that no side is considerably darker or lighter. It's really no cast shadow. So that just messes with your eye. And it is a photograph. It's not like photoshopped. Uh, all the stuff you see is not photoshopped. She actually arranged all these images, made all the objects in the pictures, and then shot the image. So this is her uh, working at one of her setups. This is for radioactive cats, and that's Sandy Scogland right there doing the painting. And she makes all the objects for her scene. It takes a month to set these up, uh, get them just right, collect all the objects, make the animals, stage everything. And then at the last moment, the human actors or models are added and she photographs the scene. So this is the finished product, uh, Radioactive Cats. This is from 1980. And this one gives me almost like an apocalyptic feeling, you know, like, you know, like maybe the post nuclear war and there's these radioactive cats running all around. Um, but she set the scene all up with furniture that she bought. She made the cats, uh, which are life size cats, like a normal size cat. You know, she made those using chicken wire and plaster. And then she asked some elderly neighbors of hers to act as the models. 
Here's another one. The tableau. You see the people in the back of the restaurant acting like nothing weird is going on, even though the room is overrun with uh, giant red foxes. Fox games. Uh, this one's kind of apropos called Germs Are Everywhere. And can you guess what the germs are? Those little pink germs that are all over everything? Yeah, take a close look. They're chewed chewing gum. Can you imagine how long it took to assemble that much chewed chewing gum? Anyway, that's dedication. So this is the camera she uses. So you might be used to, you know, phone cameras, or if, if somebody has a camera, or they're smaller, kind of 35 millimeter cameras. Um, this is an eight by 10 view camera. So that's what she shot all the photos we're looking, gonna look at with. Uh, so it creates a very large negative, eight by 10 inch negative. So it gives her lots more detail that she wouldn't be able to get if she, so that's why her pictures look so crystal sharp is cause she, um, she uses a much larger negative that gives her very, very finely rendered details. Okay, so this one is the greenhouse and uh, she made all the dogs for that one too. So some, some artists have called her kind of surrealistic, kind of if you think back at the work of Magritte, um, kind of scenes that could never exist in real life that your mind, mind kind of has these weird dreamlike images. So this this kind of qualifies as surrealist art, I think. Um, and here she is at work making all this dog. So you can kind of see the process there of making the dogs, arranging the scene. And then here you can see that she uh, actually two years later recycled the dogs and, and staged them all on the beach. And this is actually a monochrome color scheme. So it's all kind of shades of brown and tan. And while all the other photos you looked at were realistic colors, so if the uh, the dogs were green in the photo, they were also green in the scene that she set up. She didn't change the colors in any way. Uh, this one got made that brown kind of sepia tone during the development process of the negative. So the dogs were probably still green. Okay, and this is the last one we're gonna look at. This one is called uh, Breathing Glass. And can you guess how she made that one? Yeah, she turned her camera upside down. So the whole thing was staged upside down where the, the only thing that was really right above were the people. Um, but if you look at the background, there are all those dragonflies. Those are hand blown glass and she actually made those dragonflies. She learned how to blow glass to create these objects. For some of her other art, like there's one where everything and everybody is covered in raisins. She actually took classes on grape growing. So she doesn't do anything by halves. So now that you've learned a little bit about Sandy Scogland, um, how about you create a creative, surrealistic kind of staged photo art of your own? All right, so for your art project today, you will photograph a staged scene and you can photograph it with a um, telephone, you know, just use your, your phone camera or you can use an actual camera, it doesn't really matter, uh, either way will work. And then just go look around your house, walk around your house and try and find some things that you can put together to create kind of the surrealistic dreamlike scene. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll see you in a moment. So here are some of the things I found that I think I might want to build my scene out of. And so I'm going to start building and uh, you can too. Kind of built my scene. I might rearrange that a little bit. So the last thing I'm going to do is just to take the photo. And so that'll be the, the last image that you'll see here in this presentation. And I hope you will send me photos of what you have made because I'm really interested in where your imagination takes you. See you next month. Bye bye.